next vlog from my Florida trip is a park that I'm really excited about and actually it's two parks because I'm at Universal Orlando Resort. I started with two rides on my favorite coaster, Florida, the incredible Hulk coaster. I know that's controversial to have it ranked ahead of Velocicoaster, but I love just how intense this ride is. My first ride was actually not that good because the soundtrack was glitching half the ride. It was cutting in and cutting out a lot. So that was no fun. And then the second ride was much better. Now I'm going over to Velocicoaster to get a couple rides in on that. Then I'm going over to Universal Studios Florida where I will be riding Revenge of the Mummy for my first time. If you guys saw my vlog from Universal in 2022, you may recall that Revenge of the Mummy was down for its extensive refurbishment that lasted a good chunk of the year. It is back open today and I'm excited to get on that for my first time and also get on Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket again, see how that is. But before we go over to Universal Studios Florida, let's go take a ride on Velocicoaster. Just rode Velocicoaster and I feel bad about not having that in my top five. So I'm moving it ahead of Lightning Rod. So it's now my number five. I will say that Velocicoaster is definitely not gonna rank any higher than five because Hulk is right there above it, as well as Kinaka Dragster and Voyage. Now I'm gonna take the Hogwarts Express, which is also closed last time I was here, and go over to Universal Studios Florida and ride Revenge of the Mummy for the first time. So let's do it. Just did the Hogwarts Express to get from Islands of Adventure to Universal Studios Florida. And while I'm not a Harry Potter fan, it was a good way to get from park to park in a relatively short period of time. And now it is almost time for me to ride my most anticipated new credit of 2024. Yep, Revenge of the Mummy is my most anticipated new credit of 2024. As for what I'm expecting from this ride, I am expecting the second best indoor coaster that I've been on. The reason I say that is because Space Mountain over at Magic Kingdom is my favorite indoor coaster. Given how that was a sentimental favorite of mine, I do not see Revenge of the Mummy beating it. Also, I think Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, which you can kind of see over there, I think that is a shot at beating Mummy too. I have never ridden Revenge Mummy, but I heard it's got great theming, incline launch, good airtime, fire effects, loads of fire effects for that matter, and I'm excited to try it out for myself. So we're gonna head over there right now, do it at least twice to make up for the amount of time I lost on it during the trip I made in 2022 when it was down for refurbishment. So it'll be so weird to see the ride actually open. Quick flashback to what it looked like in June of 2022 for that matter. Revenge of the Mummy is closed. I've heard good things about this ride, so it would've been cool to experience it. As you guys just saw, there was a wall in front of the plaza for Revenge of the Mummy. I meant to say the ride's entrance, not the entire plaza for the ride. I imagine it'll look a lot different once we get over there, which will be not too much longer, which I think it's right over here. I remember it was right near Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, but the entrance plaza I've never seen for this ride is like fully open and whatnot. So I'm excited to take a look at this for myself. So let's go take a look and see what it looks like. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Revenge of the Mummy is open. This looks totally weird as I'm not used to seeing this, but the entrance sign and everything looks good. I'm really excited for this ride, so let's go take a ride or two. First time entering the building for Revenge of the Mummy. I am a little bit nervous for this because I have absolutely no idea what this layout is. Normally I know what coasters do, but I don't know what this thing does. I know it has an eight by launch, a really good air to moment after the fact. Other than that, I'm not really sure what else this thing has. Just rode Revenge of the Mummy for the first time. Unfortunately, I can't say I'm too impressed with this ride. No airtime after the incline launch. It was very smooth though, I'll give it that, but there was no airtime after the incline launch. There weren't too many pauses on that ride. The coaster section felt short. The effects were good, I'll give it that, but other than that, I wasn't really impressed. Rip Red Rocket for me destroys the Revenge of the Mummy, and I don't know if it's better than Hagrid or not. Revenge of the Mummy for the second time, and it was better this time as compared to my first ride. The airtime moment after the incline launch was better. Positives were better. Better sense of speed, I thought. The fire effects were hotter. Overall, I would say everything about this ride was better. And it didn't bother me that I was as sort of a ride this time, because I knew what to expect at the time, and I had more fun on it. But it's still not better than Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, which is where I'm going to now. This thing is one of the roughest coasters I've ever ridden. And that's not an uncommon opinion. Like, I think everyone who has written it agrees that it's a rough ride. So, I'm a little nervous about it, because given how my rough fist tolerance is pretty low, I wonder just how much I'll be able to handle this time. <laughs>
Red Rocket twice, and I did Code 703, which is in the Bell Tolls on the Secret Song list, which I did do that last time I was here. And then on my second ride, I did Code 112, which is Freebird by Leonard Skinner. I did not do that one last time, and it was cool to do that one. And the reason why I did that song is because there's this hilarious video I found called Peter Griffin in City Escape, which City Escape is the Sonic Adventure 2 battle stage. Someone edited him into City Escape. Well, it's actually City Escape from Sonic Generation that he edited him into, but someone edited Peter Griffin into that, and they had Freebird playing along with a gang playing Galleon, which that's from Donkey Kong Country, I think. And actually, no, I, I, it wasn't Peter Griffin in City Escape, it was the boys at City Escape. It was some hilarious video of some guys running away from a giant truck in City Escape. So I'll link that video as well as Peter Griffin in City Escape down below, just so you guys can go watch him. But since Freebird along with Gangplay Galleon were playing in the boys of City Escape, I had to try Freebird on Rip Ride Rocket and it was pretty good. And then I rode Revenge of the Mummy front and back. Usually I prefer to avoid the back on forward launch coasters. The back on Revenge of the Mummy was actually pretty decent. I do prefer the front by a decent margin, mainly because the launch in the front I thought was better, although I did look behind me on the incline launch, so that was pretty good. And also I thought the smoothness of the ride wasn't as good as it was in the front. Like I was on the back right and there was a bit of a vibration the whole ride and it was not the most comfortable. So I prefer Revenge of the Mummy in the front row. Now I'm going back over to Islands of Adventure and getting multiple more rides on Hulk because I've only ridden it twice today. Those were my first rides today. I haven't been back over there since because I did Velocicoaster once and I've been over here at Studios all day. So let's head back to Islands of Adventure.
a third time a little bit ago. Something strange happened on that ride. Before I got on, the train ahead of me was dispatching. One of the ride ops told one of the other ones to stop the train. So the train stopped like halfway outside the station. Yeah, the soundtrack was still playing. And because the soundtrack didn't stop, it played really loud and echoed throughout the entire station, which I thought was pretty hilarious. I definitely got into it because that soundtrack is so good. It's the reason why it's my top right here, even over Velocity. Although, none of you would agree with me on that. for a little bit, came back to Islands of Adventure to ride Velocicoaster, only to realize that the express line is out of the entrance, and the main line is also absurdly long, so might have to pass on that for tonight. I'll make sure to get multiple more rides tomorrow. I think I'm going back towards Hulkin, getting some more rides in on that. <laughs> rides on Hulk and I'm gonna try and spend the last 30 or so minutes of the park being open getting nighttime shots of Hulk because I gotta capture how awesome this lag package is. There was a lightning flash I just saw over behind Velocicoaster over there so hopefully that doesn't close all the rides down but if it does then oh well.
Continuing with the theme of not giving my right count at the end of the day before ending the night, I completely forgot to do that for yesterday's right count at Universal. My right count yesterday was six on the Incredible Hulk coaster, four on Revenge of the Mummy, two on Hollywood Rip Red Rocket, and one on Velocicoaster and the Hogwarts Express. I would have done Velocicoaster a second time, but like I said a few minutes ago, the Express line was almost as long as the main line, and since it was a 45 minute wait, I would probably guess it would probably be like, I don't know, maybe an hour or so, because if I had to guess, I would probably be alternating who gets to go between standby lion riders and the express riders in terms of going to the metal detector or after you put your stuff in a locker so that's why i decided to pass on velocicoaster but i'll get multiple more rides on that later today it is still very dark out as you guys can probably tell you might be thinking yourself why are you up so early it's because i am trying to be first on hagrid this morning i'm doing hagrid so early so i can try and get front row bike seat which is my favorite seat on this ride by far i got the seat back in 2022 and it was absolutely incredible i'd like to try and replicate that experience today it is a little after 5 30 now and I'm heading over there right now to be first in line for it. Probably a bad idea that I'm doing this after only getting five hours of sleep, but you gotta do what you gotta do to get the best seat on the most popular ride in the park. So let's go. First one here, and so begins the tedious process of waiting another hour and a half to wait for these gates to open because I believe they open up at seven and it's 5 40 last I checked. And in case you're wondering, there's absolutely nobody behind which it's kind of expected given how early I got out. Now, if there was someone already here, that would have been very impressive of them, honestly, because they would have had to get up absurdly early. And I was up at 5.15 to be here first in line. So, yeah, if someone had woken up early to beat me here, that would have been absurd. It's a little after 7 now, and we've reached our next checkpoint, which is the front gate to get into Islands of Adventure. I imagine that once 8 o'clock comes around, it's going to be a mad dash streak to Haggard, and I imagine this is what a monster will feel like. I remember doing it in 2027, and it was a lot of fun. Man, I destroy everybody on the way there. So let's see if we can replicate that today. That plan of getting up at 5.15 in the morning to get a front row bike almost backfired on me. I made a wrong turn when trying to get over here. Someone happened to overtake me, so I was not the first one on it. And uh, the person having me got front row bike, and they actually got the whole train to themselves, so they got us in right on it. Thankfully, since there was no line, I was able to wait an extra train, which huge thanks to the ride for allowing me to do that. So I waited back and got the second train today and got front row bike with it, which that's a huge dub. That's all I wanted to get, front row bike. Any other seat would not have been worth it, even front row sidecar. Drop track did not feel like a drop tower, which is awesome. And uh, if you guys love it, then you know I don't like drop towers, but this drop track was acceptable because it didn't feel like a drop tower. Now I'm gonna go over and do Velocicoaster because I only rode that one once yesterday and like it's not even 10 minutes into early entry. Velocicoaster is part of early entry. So I'm gonna do one, if not two laps on it, then go wait for the incredible whole coaster to open and try for a Zen ride on that. Just rode Velocicoaster and that thing is amazing. A little bit slower than my ride yesterday, but then again, it hasn't even been open for like 30 minutes yet. So I imagine it's running slow. I think the train I was on had a bit of a rattle to it, but other than that, really solid. Now I'm gonna go away for the incredible Hulk coaster to open. See if I can replicate my favorite coaster ride I've ever had, which was my second Zen ride on the incredible Hulk coaster in 2022. What made that ride my favorite is that I would remain silent the whole ride and listen to the on-ride soundtrack, which is way louder on that particular ride. Luckily because there was no external noise dampened it, so it was hitting me at full volume. So let's head over there and see if we can replicate that experience when it does open in a bit. Zen ride, and I sadly was not able to replicate my amazing experience because it was the glitchy train. The soundtrack didn't play out the ride, and because of that, I would say my second ride was a lot better. Not only did I actually get to hear the full soundtrack this time, but it was also an overspeed ride. In other words, it was going so fast that the train slammed to a stop on the mid course for a couple seconds, and that was my third time having that happen. Man, it was wild. I forgot how insane overspeed rides are on the incredible roller coaster. <laughs>
what all those weird shots were of Revenge of the Mummy. First off, I apologize for being dark because I was under the ride on a production tour for the sake. If you ask one of the ride ops, they'll see if there's someone available to give you a Revenge of the Mummy production tour, which you got to learn about the movie, see some of the props used in the movie, and even got to go under the last scene of the ride, which is amazing. That was my favorite part. I highly recommend doing it to anyone who gets the chance, and it's completely free. All I have to do is ask and they see if somebody's available. I have no regrets, and I would also do it again, given how cool it was. Huge shout out to Dina for being an awesome tour guide and allowing me to stay under the ride to get shots of it running. Also, if doing the production tour of Revenge of the Mummy is a priority for you, I recommend watching the entirety of both The Mummy and The Mummy Returns for your visit to get a better understanding of everything the tour guide will talk to you about with this thing. <laughs> Got two more rides on Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket. First one I did was code 707 on the secret song list, which was Know Your Enemy by Rage Against the Machine. In 2022, I did that song and it synced up with the first drop, which is really cool. This year, however, it didn't do that. So I don't know if the timing was off or if it no longer does that, which if it doesn't do that anymore, that would stink because it was really cool how that synced up in 2022. And then the second code I did was 715, which is Wake Up Dead by Megadeth. Something weird on that particular ride happened where the soundtrack played past its initial point. like. The points where it's supposed to stop at and it went into a part of the song that isn't really supposed to be on Hollywood Rip Ride Rockets. So that was interesting. And then I did Villain Con Minion Blast, which you guys just saw my score. I don't know if that's a good score or not a good score. I don't know. If anyone here is a local to Universal, comment below whether that score is better than what a lot of people get because I'm genuinely unsure as to how well I actually did. I like to think that I did well, but at the same time, there could be people who break a million every single ride. So I need some Universal expert to let me know how I actually did in the comments below this video.
went down to the end of the So I came over to Universal Studios Florida just for the purpose of the money again. This thing, the more I ride, the more I appreciate just how good it is. And since all the outdoor rides are still closed, let's go again, because why not? Something kind of cool, Revenge of the Mummy is actually right behind this door here. When I did the production tour earlier today, this is the door I came out of. You can hear one of the effects on the ride going off right behind this door in just a second. You might be able to hear it. I didn't expect you actually be able to hear it, which it should be going off at the end of the second now. That was the effect, and I know if you guys just heard that, but you can hear it right behind the door. And also, I could also kind of hear Brendan Fraser ending live back there, so that's cool. The outdoor rides are reopened, but the express line for Hulk is absolutely packed right now, so I'm gonna hold off on it until the line for it dies out. some pretty insane rain rides in the past, but none of them compared to the rain ride I just had on Hulk. That was probably the most intense ride I've ever had on any coaster with how unnaturally fast it was running. Even more than the overspeed ride, which for whatever reason, this did not overspeed, which I don't know how that's even possible given how fast it was running through this layout. It was raining while I was on it too, which made the ride far more intense. So I'm gonna see if I can actually try and get an overspeed ride now, because that ride I just had was insane. <laughs> to end up my day and my last ride over speed over speed night rides on home those are just absurd very glad i got that as my last ride which i felt it as soon as we got the turn into the main course i'm like yep this is an over speed and it absolutely was so that was a phenomenal ride to end my day on
I come from today was seven on Hulk, four on Revenge of the Mummy, two on Hollywood, Rip Red Rocket, and Velocicoaster, and then one on Hagrid as well as Villain Con, Minion Blast. Uh, we'll be here for, I think, one, if not two more half days, so let's jump to the half day. Last day at Universal, and I am just coming from SeaWorld Orlando, where there was a weather delay. So, as you can probably expect, all the rides here are closed for the most part. However, I did see the Incredible Hulk testing, so maybe the outdoor rides will be reopening soon, but I'm not sure. Now, I do have from, I guess, 4 until 10 tonight. So, what I want to do while over here at Universal Studios Florida, which is where I'm starting at, I want to get two more rides on Revenge of the Mummy to put me up to an even 10, and then hopefully by then, Hollywood Rip Red Rockets should be open. So, once that opens, I'm going to do that once, maybe twice more, and then probably go to Islands of Adventure for the rest of the day. The wait for Revenge of the Mummy was supposed to be 55 minutes. I ended up waiting 31 minutes and 33 seconds, and I had timed that from when I entered the building to when I got into the vehicle. There was no one in the second line, so I saved an extra five minutes right there. As far as no one noticed that, I definitely took advantage of it and got on quicker. <laughs> Just got my 10th and final ride on Revenge of the Mummy for this trip, and I'm really gonna miss this thing. I will say that it was a good ride to end out on at least, so that was really nice. And I was gonna ride Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, but all the rides was back down due to weather, even though they were open for like, I don't know, 20 minutes. So I'm going to Islands of Adventure and waiting it out over there. Maybe if Hulk opens up, get a ride on that, because I do not have Express Pass today, so I'm gonna be doing quite a bit of waiting in the main line. So if I had to choose between that and Rocket, I'd say Hulk, so let's hit over there. Road Hulk, and that ride just was not. I waited 45 minutes only to get the train that didn't have the audio playing very much. So it was playing maybe 20% of the ride at the absolute most. And it wasn't quite as intense as I remembered it being either because of that. So I'm gonna try that again later, but that last round of Hulk is not good.
vehicles and a road request that those be proper. on Hulk now that I've gotten some shots of Hagrid and it pays me to do this but I'm gonna have to skip Velocicoaster today. The main line is through all the indoor switchbacks and the express line is out of the entrance. So combine those two factors we're looking at probably a 90 minute wait and the park's only open another hour and a half. So I feel like I can maybe get two rides on Hulk in the amount of time it's even to get one on Velocicoaster. So let's head over to Hulk.
time I did not get the soundtrack, but the second time I did. And that last ride, oh man, was it good. I was perfectly content with making that my last ride of the day, even though the park still had like half hour before they closed. In terms of the ride count from today, it was three on Hulk and two on Revenge of the Mummy. So not a ton of riding in the day, but then again, I didn't have express pass, so I couldn't ride as much as I wanted. As for what my total ride count was over my two and a half days of Universal, I'll review that and share that with you guys right now. Over my two and a half days at Universal Orlando, my final ride count was 16 on the Incredible Hulk coaster, 10 on Revenge of the Mummy, 4 on Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, 3 on Velocicoaster, and then 1 on Hagrid, the Hogwarts Express, and Villain Con Minion Blast. In terms of highlights, getting on Revenge of the Mummy for the first time was awesome, Villain Con was a nice surprise, didn't expect that to be as good as it was, getting back on the Incredible Hulk coaster was great, front row bike on Hagrid was great, and then Velocicoaster breaking into my top 5 was also pretty good. Another highlight, the production tour for Revenge of the Mummy. How could I forget about that? It was so cool to go behind the scenes of the ride and also learn about the Mummy movies and see actual props from them. So that was pretty cool. And before we go off this video, please be sure to leave a like if you haven't done so already. Be sure to come away and join about this video and be sure to share it with someone else if you know. If you're new to this channel like we saw, please consider subscribing for more content like this. My goal is to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So I appreciate you subscribing and hit the bell so you can notified every time I upload a video. I also have an Instagram account for the pictures I take whenever I visit the park, so please check me out there as well via the link in the description. As for the next vlog, it'll be from Busch Gardens, Tampa, so stay tuned for that. Until then, I'll see you later.